Okay, if you're starting a new project using the Flask REST Hello Boilerplate, you will find here the video that you're watching right now. It's here when you click on this on this button to play. And you will also find that it's gonna try to run at once. Like it's gonna run here the server, it's installing right now, it's running the pipenv install the typical command that you need to run to install all the Python dependencies and on the right it's giving you some instructions to migrate, upgrade, start and deploy just in case you want to do those like the migration is to create to create the database migrations like the files to create your database and the upgrade it's to apply those migrations so every time that you change something in the model.py you migrate and upgrade and then you start the server and once you're done you can just deploy to Heroku to have it published basically and not when you're done but you should do it like if you're coding for the final project you should do it every day at the end of the day or every couple of days because you don't want your partner to have a different version of the API you want you want your partner to have the latest version um, you will see that when it finished finally loading, it will show up here this Rigo baby, the little baby. It's Rigoberto, the the company mascot or the academy mascot. You're gonna it's gonna greet you. Then you're gonna find your API host that it's here. Okay, that's your API host that you're gonna be using every time you do a request with Postman or with the front end using Fetch. You see that there's a quick start here that you can click and it will take you basically to some uh, table of contents explaining you how to create a database. You don't have to do this part if you're doing using it, but if you're using it locally, you do have to create the database. And uh, the typical um, create, read, update, and delete for one table. It's that's how you add an endpoint. Like all the everything I'm explaining today here in this video, you're gonna have it there. And then you're going to have a couple of URLs already by default. The admin, that if you open it, you will see that it happens an admin that will let you add and delete manually data here. Um, for example, if I say this is my email, then whatever password, if I save it, I have now one user in the database. And I have this user here because it's here on the models.py. So, to start from scratch, basically everything starts on the main. You'll see here that we import a bunch of stuff that we need, including the models, uh, to set up the administration. The administration is what I just showed you. This is the administration, it's like a backend or like a back office that comes with the boilerplate to create and list your information. Then you have uh, for exceptions, this is to avoid course domain errors. Um, this one is not being used and then for migrations. So the boilerplate starts in the line 14 here It adds a new Flask API then it removes the, the it doesn't Because when, when you're having an API if you put the endpoint like this Like when you're doing an endpoint if your endpoint will be slash user Slash user should be the same as slash user slash, you know, like with or without the slash should be the same and that is that property here that says strict slashes, false. It's saying that with or without the slash, it doesn't really matter. Then the connection string is to connect to your database. By default, it comes with this one, look, with this connection string. It's saying that we're gonna be using MySQL with this driver, then the username for the database is gonna be root. There's no password. If there were a password, you would see it here I think with a colon and, and the password. So there is no password for this user. Then it's gonna connect with localhost and the database name is example. This is typical when you're doing backend, you always have to have a connection to the database and you have to explain, uh, specify your credentials. Then it comes also with uh, SQL Alchemy track modifications, true. This is for every time that you modify your, your model for the database, it will uh, create a migration basically and here it is for the migration then it's initializing the app it's applying the course that i specified and then setting up the admin 
Then this one here, you don't have to worry about it. It's basically trying to make your uh, the exceptions look more beautiful. This is the first endpoint that when you put nothing on the URL, if you don't put anything here in the URL, this is the endpoint that lists all the URLs that you have available, these two. So that one you shouldn't modify either. And then you have the, the your first endpoint here, that it's slash user. It's a post to user, so it's creating a user basically. This endpoint is creating a user. Maybe it's better if I will leave it like this. I think it's better. Response body equal and then message hello your get user this is your get user response so let's just response this like this response body jsonify this you always have to use jfonify when you wanna answer something and I'm gonna make this a get. So what are you gonna do next? Like you're seeing this boilerplate, you wanna make sure that uh, the, what, what are the next steps? Basically, you have to create an API, right? So every API must have a bunch of um, objects. Um, objects, not I mean a database. So the first thing I would do if I were you, it's creating a, a diagram. To create a diagram, you I, I normally use um, a diagram, I mean a database, right? So I normally use, I think here you can find it, what we, there's an exercise where you build the Instagram database. Here, yeah. Here it is. So I normally use this website here, quickdatabasediagrams.com. This database is this um this is super cool. Let me log out. Okay. So how does it work? Uh, you're gonna create your, your endpoints here. So let, let's assume that I'm building an e-commerce, right? So I need if I have an e-commerce, I need products. So product product and then the product will have an ID, of course, then it would have a name or a title, I guess. That it's going to be a string, the ID will be a, an int, this will be the primary key. That means that they will, it will identify each of the products. Then the product will have probably a price, and it's going to be a float, and that's it. Then let's say that I also have, because I have a store, right? So the category. So the category will be. Um, ID and then title as well. The title is a string, the ID is a PK. And then of course I have the pivot table between product and category. So I have product because one product can have several categories. Let's say that we it doesn't have to. So we're gonna have here the category ID. A product can only be in one category because it's not like a tag, right? So category ID it's a it's an, an int, but it's gonna be a foreign key that points to Category dot ID. And there it is. You see here the drawing. You have from on the one side you have the category. So one category can have many products, but one product can only have one category. So that's why you have here the crawfruit here, the the little symbol that uh, means many. So basically this type of database, if you're doing an e-commerce, then you will have to replicate it into your actual um, SQL Alchemy, right? Uh, we also have the table user that we already have. So the user has an ID, and let's say that it has a first name. And then let's put another table uh, like um, shopping cart. Shopping cart. And a shopping cart can have many products, and so it, it will have the product ID. Product ID the quantity and the user ID and I guess it will have a price right the total price total price so the product ID will be an integer that will be a foreign key to product dot ID 
the quantity is just a float. No, it's actually it's an int. And the user, it's it's an int that will point to the foreign key for user.id and the dollar price will be a float. So that's basically a shopping cart in, in a very basic uh, scenario. Let's put this one here. Yeah. That's a little shop. So now if we're going to replicate this, I'm not going to replicate entirely because we don't have enough time, but I'm going to replicate a little bit. So now I go, I go to my model.py. I already have the user table. You see it has ID, email, password, and it's active here. I replicate exactly what I put here on the user. So I, it, it, this one only has an ID and a first name, but you will know that oh, basically I have to add the ID, right? So I will duplicate this one because the ID, the first name, my bad. It's going to be a column that is going to be a string. I think it's okay, 120. Maybe we can just put 80 because no one has um, a name that big. It doesn't have to be unique. And it cannot be nullable. Perfect. So I just added the, the first name. And then let's duplicate this table. And it's not going to be, let's go, to, let's go to call it product. Product. And then we say we said that the product was going to be, it's going to have a title. So there it is and a quantity, right? So quantity, and this will be an integer. Product has a category, so I'm missing that. I'm just gonna do the category as well because I wanna show how to do the many to many. The one to many, my bad. So category, it's gonna have an ID, but it's also, the product must have also a category ID that it's gonna be a foreign key. So you say like this. You say that it's an integer, but you also say that it's a db dot foreign foreign key. I think it's like this. Don't remember. You can see it in the docs folder. I never remember. I, you don't have to remember. If you look here, it's gonna show you in the examples how to do a model. Let's see. Ah, here it is. So it's like this. I'm gonna copy this. In my case, is Category ID, so that's okay. Column, integer, I have to put in the integer. And then here I have to specify to which, where is the, yeah, it's gonna point to category dot ID, because here's the table category, right? So that's it. And now on the other side, like it says here, on the other side, I have to put the relationship. On the other side so that what that means is that on on one side I put the category ID and I put that it's a foreign key and in the other side I have to put a relationship that doesn't show up here because the relationships what this is gonna create is an array of products so I, I will be able to see in a category what are the products of that category that's a calculated attribute it's not an attribute that actually stores it's it's dynamic you know so it's like this products and then it's a relationship with product, and that's it. And you're saying that products will be an array that is going to be filled with products, but it's going to automatically fill based on the products that we have on the database that are pointing to this particular category. And that's that's pretty much it. Like, after you have this, you have a model. Let's say that we already have a model. Now we have to start creating our crude operations, depending on your, uh, on your project. But sometimes you will have some, and sometimes you will have other so for example, get user is already done. We can test this already. Like we can just go here to the to the postman and try it out. Let's see. So I'm gonna copy my host. Here is my host. So I'll copy this. I'm gonna use it here. And then I'm gonna say user and I'm gonna put a get. It's a get request because that's what it says here. Look, it's a get request to slash user. And it should respond this object in a JSON because we're JSONifying it. So let's see if it does it. If I send it, it's giving a 500 internal status error, but we can see that error here on the cool not determine join condition between parent child tables, relationship category, the products. Okay, let's see. It seems that we have a problem with the database and I have made a lot of changes in the model and I haven't run the migrations. So maybe that's the problem. You know, let's try. Well, this one's a category, by the way. I forgot to do the serializations. You should do the serializations as well. Uh, product will be, I guess, the title. And a category will be also the title. 
yeah and here I guess it's better to put the title and here it's better to put the title as well and in this one it's okay with the email okay so I'm gonna run the migrations now right bpm run migrate hopefully it will work could not determine join condition between parent child tables and relationship with dairy product there are no foreign kids linked to that table okay let's see so apparently category dot products so this one maybe it's because I have to put it like this let's see now it's gonna tell me that it doesn't know what category it is yeah category is not defined so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it this way I'm gonna put product after category because here we're declaring category and then we use category here. I think I deleted a curly bracket at the end. Okay, let's try again. And it worked. Look, everything fine. So it migrated. Now PPM run upgrade to push those changes into my database. And it's done. And now I can run the, the project again. PPM run start. And it's probably going to work now. So let's try again, send it. There it is, look, message, hello, this is your get user response. So that's not a good response, right? I'm trying to get all the users. That's what I'm trying to get, because I'm doing a get request to user, and I'm not specifying the user one or the user two, no, just user. So it's every user in the database. And right now we are not responding every user in the database. We are hard coding here response body. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go here again to the database and look for the documentation for how to get a lot of users, a lot of whatever here. It's people query all. So let's try that. I'm gonna try doing a query with all, for all the users. So user query all, and then here users, because I'm querying all the users, and then I'm gonna JSONify it. Let's try again to see if we get the users now with Postman. We send it, 500. So let's see. User is not a JSON serializable. Okay. So I guess I have to do like this as well. Yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about this. The I have to loop all the users. After I get the users here, I get them. Then I have to loop them and serialize each of them. This method here, serialize, is coming from user serialize. So I'm saying for every user, I want to call the method serialize. So it's converting. An a class user or an object user into an actual dictionary that makes more sense to convert into a JSON. So it's only gonna contain ID and email. Let's see, let's see if we get it. Here's gonna be all users. If we run it again, and there we go. Look, we have one user. What you what user the one I created on the on the back end at the beginning of the of the of this tutorial. So if I go back to the admin and I add a second user. Let's call Bob, bob at gmail.com. Password is this one. It's active, save. I just created it. So if I call this again, I should have two now. Yeah, there they go. Alejo and Bob. Now, if you're gonna do, uh, that's for getting all the users. Now for adding a new user, you're gonna, you're gonna have a post because post is for adding, right? And then instead of quitting this, like instead of getting all the users, you don't get anything. What you do is that you do, you're gonna get the the user that you wanna get when you change it to a post to user. Now you have to specify on the body as a JSON the user information. So you're gonna put raw, and then here you're gonna pick instead of text, JSON. And then you're gonna put here the user information. So let's say that my user is gonna have first name. Let me see, do I need a first name? No, I need, yeah, first name, email, and password. Okay, so I'm gonna put here first name, Let's, let's say uh, Sandra, email, so send at gmail.com, and the password, it's gonna be one, two, three, one, two, three. So this will be like a sign up, right? When you're signing up to a new website, you're gonna specify your first name, email, and password, typically. So if we send this, right now we're gonna probably get an error. Let's see what we get. 405, method not allowed. So that means the method doesn't even exist because I haven't saved this. So I have to save this to Let's just do it. Let's just do, uh, let's respond whatever here, whatever. And then I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna send it. 
Again, we get a 500. Ah, uh, yeah, because I have to change the name of the function as well. So I'm going to call this one create user. And now it's going to work. It's saying that it was overriding an existing uh, endpoint. That's because they have both the same name. So let's try again. If I send it again, I get a uh, 200, okay, and I get the whatever here. You see? Now, all we're going to do is get the request uh, user. So the user that is on the request, let's say request body user, because it's more explicit. Body user. And we're going to do request.getJSON. And then here, request. Let's just return this to see. So we're just getting it and then putting it back, right? Like sending it back to, as a response. Let's see what, what we get. So if I send it again, we got exactly what we sent. You see, if I put an A here on the, on the request and I look for the response, I have the same A here at the end. So I'm sure that I got what I wanted. I also can do a print here and I can print the entire request by the user to see what we got from the front end or from Postman in this case. We send it and in the console, you do get this. Look, here it is. It's the entire first name, Sandra, email, san, password. Okay. So we're going to save this into the database, right? It, we, we have to save it. So let me check again the documentation, how to save. Here it is inserting data. So I'm going to copy this three here. I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to adapt to my own needs. I want to create a user. And a user, I know that from the front end or from Postman, I'm getting the first name, email, and password. So I'm going to say first. Well, this first name here that I'm going to type, it has to match this property, first name. So I'm going to just put those properties. First name. I'm going to put email. The blue ones have to match. And then password. Now, the... Orange ones have to match the JSON, not the database, because it's what's coming from the front end. So I'm going to put now here the JSON, but I'm going to put first name because I'm getting that from here, first name. Then I have to replicate it again for the email, and then I have to do it for the password. So email, and then the password as well. user1. This doesn't have to be called user1. It can be called however you like. We can call it um, earth because I'm creating a new user and I'm saving it in the variable earth. That doesn't make much sense that name but it's just to explain you that you don't have to call it anything. And then I'm saying db session add so I'm adding earth into the database session and then I'm committing that session. So let's try that. Now if I do it again boom the response is a 500. Column is active, cannot be null. Okay, I specified here that this one cannot be null. So what I can do is that I can make it null, like this. Uh, I can say notable true. Or I can also say that default is, is active false. Let's say that by default is false. I actually, I want to say it true. By default, I want to make it true. It's giving me that error because when I create a new, the new here, when I create a new user, I specify the first name, the email, the password, but I don't specify the is active. So I should, or I can just make it default to true, that way I don't have to specify it. So I just changed it, but I didn't migrate. Let me see if it works. One, two, three. Yep, it worked. It added Sandra, and if I go to my admin and list, you will see Sandra there. There it is, it's added. I can modify it from here. Or I can modify it also from an endpoint. I can create just another endpoint. But now it will be for the put because it's modifying a user and I have to specify which user, right? So you're gonna you're gonna get the parameter like this. Let's call it user ID. You have to specify here in this in the endpoint that you wanna receive a variable that is gonna be an integer. So that way the, the person can, when they put slash user slash something, you know that that something is gonna be an ID and a, a user ID, and it's gonna be an integer. So here I can say, I wanna modify the user number three. Let's see what the user number three is. 
So to get that user's ID, my recommendation is you can either do a get, right? Let's go back to a get. Let's do a get to user and it will give you all the users and you will be able to see the IDs. Let's see, there it is, use ID one, ID two, ID three. Or you can come here to the admin and click on the pencil and it will show you in the URL, here it is, look, ID number two. This is the number two. Or I can go back to another one and you will see that it's ID number three. That's another way of looking for the ID. So going back to that, I'm saying whatever ID it is, just give it to me in a user ID variable. So here it is, I'm passing the user ID here. Then I need to look for the update. Updating data, here it is. This is the update in the documentation. So I'm gonna paste this here. So what's happening here? Like I'm getting the JSON from the front end again. Let's say that I only wanna change the first name. I don't wanna change the password and I don't wanna change the email, just the first name for the user three and I'm gonna rename it to Ramon. So that's it, only the first name to Ramon and it's gonna be a put, right? I'm modifying. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna say, okay, get me the, the JSON that came from the response, from the request. So this JSON here, it only has first name, right? So it's gonna say, uh, first get me the user with that user ID. So user.query.get is always the name, the table, the model name, so the model name, then the query dot get in the other one was in the other one that we we're getting all the users was user dot query dot all the difference is that we're saying here dot all and the difference in the other one is that we're saying dot get okay so it's user id and then if there's no user user not found if there is then i'm gonna say if there's a username in the request body user so in the request body if there's a username then i want to change that username if there's an email, then I wanna change, I wanna change that email on the user one. And I also have to do it with first name, right? First name. If there's a first name, then I wanna get from that request body user that first name and assign it in user one dot first name. And then I wanna do a commit. So let's see that. Let's see if it works. First, let me pass an idea that doesn't exist. So seven send and what do we get back a 500 view function mapping is overriding ah yeah i forgot here i have to put update that's it so i do here it says user not found and it's a 404 and that's this look user not found so if i change this to not found with a lot of o's and i send it again you will see that we have all those o's so basically we write an API exception with a 404 status code because 404, 404 means not found. So we should follow the best practices for HTTP response errors. If we pass a 400, we're saying that you made a mistake on your request, like maybe the username, you didn't specify a, a valid property or something like that. But if it's not found, you should return a 404. Now let me return, let me pass a put request to the user number three and we're gonna change the name to Ramon, right? So let's send it. He gave us back a 200. And now if we go back and check for the users, you're gonna see that now it's called Ramon, the number three. If I change now, instead of uh, the number three, I'm gonna say the number two, I'm gonna call it Jackson. I send it, and if I refresh, you have Jackson now here. So that's how you do it. You're missing only the delete. The delete, you can also copy it from here. Deleting data, it's this one. And then for deletion, you will create another endpoint, right? Another one. So let's do another one. We make sure that we respond. I forgot to respond, so return, JSONify. You can return whatever you want here. I, I can say just okay. Okay, and a 200. And then I would say user, I wanna get the user, user the query to get user ID, right? So whatever ID was specified on the URL, it's a delete. And here will be delete user. And then uh, if the user is not found, the same thing, and then DB session delete, DB session commit, okay, let's see. I'm gonna delete now the number three. So the number three, I'm gonna do a delete. Boom. 
Let's see what we get. We got a 200. We got the OK that we wanted. And if we look in the database, the list of users, it's going, we don't have the user anymore, that user. We only have now Jackson and the empty first name. So that's it. That's how you do create, delete, update, and insert. But you should be aware because sometimes you have to do something more, more difficult than that. Like, like say, for example, that I'm buying, a, a, if you're doing a, for the e-commerce, if someone is buying a product, you have to specify then the product ID. So you're saying that the product one is being added by the user one. And, and that's it, right? Like those two will be enough. I, I'm saying the user one, it's adding into a card, the, the product one. And here it will be, I guess, something like card. And then it's going to be a post because I'm adding a new, a new product into the card. Ah, maybe the quantity, right? We're missing the quantity. The quantity. Yeah, it's adding two of those. So two product ones to the user one. So if I send it, it's going to tell me right now that the method is not allowed or not found. Here it is. It's not found because I haven't added. But I would have to create that new endpoint, right? So I'm going to call it add to card. And here it will be card, just card. I don't have to specify anything else. And then I'm not receiving anything, but I know that in the JSON that comes from the request, I have to get those three properties, right? So it will be product ID. I know that it's going to be from the JSON, the product ID. The same will happen with the user ID. So user ID user ID. I will get those two. And then what should I do? I should add a new one, right? Add a new, a new, a new product there. Or maybe I should find if it already has one. And if it has one, if the user already put that product in the cart, then I need to modify it instead of adding it. So that's another logic, right? You have to get it first. I can do it like this. I can say, get me the, I don't have the table for the, for the cart. Yeah, I'm missing the shopping cart table. So I will have to do that table. But let's say that I did it already. So I would do, I would do here, shopping cart dot query dot get, not no dot get, actually dot filter. You can see that here in the examples. The dot filter is here, filter by, right? So person in your case is shopping cart dot query dot filter by. Okay, so I'm gonna filter it by and then here I specify by user ID, user ID, and by product ID, product ID. So I'm saying, give me all the all the shopping cart records with this user ID and this product ID. So I'm saying, if if it finds finally one product or one card, one item, let's say, or record, one record. For this user ID and product ID, it will give it to me. So I'm not going to write some exemption anymore. I'm just going to say that I have to update that, right? So if record is not known, then record dot quantity will be equal to whatever was specified as quantity on the request. You know, I'm saying if it's already there, if I already have, then I'm going to update the quantity because in the request, you're saying product ID, user ID is quantity. So I'm going to replace with this number whatever it was in the database. Else, else, instead of replacing the quantity, that means that, ah, if it's none, my bad, this one is in the else. If record is none, if record is none, then I create a new record. So, something like this, right? Like a new record will be record equals to shopping cart and then I have to specify the user ID that it's gonna be this user ID that we saved in a variable and this product ID will be this product ID that we saved in a variable so and the quantity I guess will be we didn't save it in a variable so we get it from the original JSON so we're, I'm creating a new record and then in the end, what do I do? Then I just commit. I just commit here. 
And then I can JSONify and return. I can return that record, but yeah, that record. I return that record. I'm missing one line here only, the dot add. Because when you add, you have to put a dot add, and I'm going to put it here. So that's it. So I'm saying, okay, I'm getting a request with a program ID and a user ID. I get it first from the database. If I already have it, then it's going to get into the else. And it's going to just modify the quantity and then commit. If I do not have it, if there's nothing in the database with that user and product, then I create a new, a new one with that user and product and that quantity. Oh, I forgot here I have to put quantity equal. Exactly. And then I do the session add and then I do the commit. So that's pretty much it. Like this one has a little bit more logic as you can see. Like you can combine the logic however you want. That's basically your, your skill set. You have to grow your skills of understanding how to combine all the things that you've learned. So I, I think everything helps. And if not, you're gonna know if this is not enough, uh, you have the documentation here, you should read it carefully. Also, a good a good resource that I would recommend, it's going to the Flask, official Flask um, SQL Alchemy website, this one. I think it's pretty good. It shows you a quick start as well. You will be, here it is, how to insert a record. This is basically the same thing that I just did. The session add and the commit. It will show you how to delete a record. Here it is. How to query. Look, user filter by. The same thing we did, the filter by. Everything we did, it's... It's in this documentation. I think it's pretty explicit. It's a very good, uh, a very good resource. So good luck.